congregation may stand for the tithe. as they make their way towards the stage and their seat, let us all pray together. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for this beautiful moment that you have given in the life of everybody gathered in this space. Father, even in the midst of a global pandemic, you're bringing and you're doing something marvelous because we believe this is the day that the Lord has made and we will be glad in it. Thank you for what you're doing. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now you all may be seated. Thank you so much. On behalf of uh, the Jacobs and the Josephs and Zion Church, I'd like to welcome everybody for this um, wedding that we are all part of. I know um, ever since I've, uh, you know, met with Louis Uncle and the family, and know that it's a very fun-loving family, especially, especially Louis Uncle, and <laughs> with the entire family. Such a blessed joy to be part of our church family and them being part to do so many things. And especially, I know um, with Priya being, um, you know, she pretty much grew up at Zion Church, uh, Roshan or Priya, Priya, right? Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to throw some lighter moments because the photographers here are trying to find people who are smiling. So keep smiling, even though, um, you know, we're all wearing face masks and uh, trying to maintain social distancing. But, um, you know, please do so throughout the service today. As we all gather here, we know that we're gathering here for two souls coming together. And we believe, according to God's words, that it is marvelous in, us, in our eyes for what the Lord does. And everybody gathered in this room and this space, you know, I would request that we gather and we have our thoughts together that we are here, number one, blessing them, two, with a heart filled of gratitude for what God is doing. And at this time, I was also told that there are hundreds of them who are joining us online from around the world. I know you all want to be part of this wedding, but unfortunately, um, you're watching on the big screen, them and all of us here. Thank you for joining us online. May God continue to bless you guys as well as you are joining us on the online platform. But people gathered in this space here, um, I can just talk about Priya for a moment and I could say that she has been an incredible source of um, uh, you know, doing so many things within Zion Church, part of the worship team, our Sunday school, and the ministry line, and the things that she has done, in fact, uh, as a, being a role model for a lot of young girls and the youth of our church has just goes on. Um, from, from the time I joined Zion, I've seen, uh, you know, Priya working for the church, and uh, 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 every time I also notice is, especially during this time of uh, quarantine and lockdown, Al has also been part of the church family just, I think, I think thrice a month or so, you know, I've seen Al just coming, bar, being part of our worship team and, and helping us out. Thank you so much for, you know, your work um, towards, the, towards God's house. 
they're not just uh, within the church, but I'm also thankful that both of them together, uh, you know, are spearheading a worship school movement in Dallas and around the nation. And a lot of their students are right here from uh, uh, the worship school. I'm so thankful that all the ministry that they are doing. Once again, it's just a reminder that God is bringing a mission, missionary couple. God is bringing together a powerhouse couple as we are going to witness that today. As we all gather together, let's be in that attitude of prayer. Celebrate this moment because God is greater and we give him all glory and honor. Once again, on behalf of Zion Church and all the families gathered here, I'd like to welcome every single one of you guys. May the Lord continue to bless you. As we gather in God's presence and we head forward into the next services of our uh, 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 wedding here, I'd like to call Pastor Sunil John to come forward and read us from the scripture. For he, as he's going to help us with psalm reading, the congregation will stand. Let's uh, read it together, meditate on it. And uh, right after Pastor Sunil, we have the Malayalam worship team. And after that, the English worship team. And right after that, we have Pastor Ashish bringing God's word. Let's flow into the service. It's going to be a good day. Let's stand in the presence of God, in honor of God's word. I'm reading from Psalm 111 this afternoon. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him, remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. So glad to be here this afternoon as these two wonderful young people come together in holy matrimony. I thank the Lord for the respective parents as well. Especially just want to say one word about Joseph Prakash's uncle. And as I read in the psalm this morning, we are truly witnessing a living miracle as God has been gracious, compassionate in their life providing healing in his life, able to attend the wedding of his son in such tremendous health. And we thank God for that this morning. And we thank God for what they mean to us as a church family as well. May God's name be praised, be lifted up as we look to the Lord in worship. Praise God. Greetings to all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's my great privilege and honor to be here. Beautiful Saturday afternoon, especially our children, Animon and Priyamor's wedding uh, ceremony. We always praise and thank our, our, our Lord he, because He has done so many things in our life. Um, we're going to do the praise and worship in Malayalam. Uh, my younger sister, Sajini's daughter Linda is singing with me. This is a very familiar song. It's a very powerful and uh, meaningful song. So you can, please, you can join with us. Chamachavane, Mahima in Prabhu 
ಪುರೋಕ್ತಾನ್ ಮಹತ್ವತಿನ್ ಯೋಗ್ಯನ್ ಮಾನವಂ ಪುಗಳ್ಚೆಯು ಯೇಸುವಿನ ಮಹಿಮಯಿನ್ ಪ್ರಭುತಾನ್ ಮಹತ್ವತಿನ್ ಯೋಗ್ಯನ್ ಮಾನವಂ ಪುಗಳ್ಚೆಯು ಯೇಸುವಿನ ಯೇಸು ನಾಥ ಶಿವನಾ 
We're going to continue worshiping in English. If you are tired and older, you can go ahead and sit down. It's okay. No one's going to judge you. You're not less holy. But if you can't stand and worship with us, please do.
this wedding ceremony, God. Would you speak to us through the word this morning? Would you speak to them through the word and encourage them, God, as they step into this beautiful institution called marriage? We thank you for your presence in this place. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, amen. Would you be seated? Greetings to each one of you. Um, I just want to take a quick moment to greet every person that has come to this place. Uh, I thank God for each one of you. Uh, amidst all the circumstances that this couple and these families had to go through, planning this wedding to this day, uh, probably cutting their guest list in half or maybe even less than half, uh, the pain that they probably would have gone through. Uh, and there are so many of you all watching online I'm pretty sure, and I speak for the couple when I say that it probably hurts them to not have each one of you here physically present as they celebrate one of the biggest and the most grandest days in their lives. But I want to thank each one of you. Uh, you know, whether you're attending in person here or watching online, we thank God that you are family and friends uh, that, that matter to Alan Priya. And for that, I am so grateful that you chose to join us this evening. Uh, I want to thank God for uh, Pastor Justin, Pastor Libin, Pastor Sunil, Pastor Vergis, all the other pastors that are a part of this wedding ceremony this morning. Uh, I thank God for what God is about to do. In a few moments, two families are going to be joined together. Uh, just not two people. Uh, you know, I, I, I am very close to both these families, um, both Joe's Prakash uncle and auntie, uh, Louie uncle and uh, Sally auntie. Uh, they're, they're uh, you know, they're, they're children, uh, all of them. Uh, I am very close to each one of them, and this day is a very special day for me as much as it is for them. Uh, their families mean a great deal for me. Uh, and the day on behalf of the families uh, when Alan Priya asked me to speak at their wedding, 
uh, I would say that I, I was like rejoicing on the inside because I was joyful. It was a, uh, it's, it's an honor, uh, I would say, for me to be here and to be able to share this day uh, with the two of them. So uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, you know, uh, from time to time, when I was, uh, when I first moved to this country, uh, I would hear when I was doing my graduate studies in Southwestern, uh, I had, I had a, a few friends, uh, Indian friends in Waxahachie, and one of them was Shan, uh, and, and of course, Binnell, and uh, Shan would always tell me about this friend that he had called Al, and I always wanted to meet this guy because he had great things to say about this dude. You know, he sounded like such a cool guy. And I remember first meeting him, meeting him, and I looked at him, and I'm like, man, this guy's like the Indian Vin Diesel, right? He had this, I was like, this guy's huge. He is big, and I would, like, be in awe, like, of, of this, this man uh, that he was. And, and look at him right now. He looks like Abhishek Bachchan, you know? Like, <laughs> I, don't you agree with me? Like, something's happened since then to now. Not that the biceps have gone anywhere, but something else has happened, too. So, Priya, I think you made the difference. But, but man, I wanted my Christianity. The more I met with Al, the more I uh, spoke with him, the more I became friends with him, I wanted my Christianity to look like him. He's sincere. He's loyal. He's humble. He's trustworthy. He's anointed. He is a man of his word. Or if I have to put it in one word, he is Christ-like. And no matter how many years in ministry I've been in, if there's one man that epitomized the personhood of Christ uh, in a walking form, and in a talking form, that man would be out. And I don't say that lightly because, lightly because I don't say that about a lot of people. And I'm lucky to call you my friend, brother. I'm lucky to call you my friend. Uh, what do I say? Roshan. I, I'm sorry. I mean Priya. <laughs> She's my baby sister, close to my heart. She and her family, her uncles, her aunts, they all welcome me with open arms. They took me as a part of their family. When I remember when my wife, Sonia, moved to Dallas right before she got married, they were one of the first families that took her in, in, in and made her special. They made her feel like she was welcome. They made her feel like she was a part of the family. And for that, I am always grateful. Louis, uncle, auntie, I'm always grateful for that. And you will always be my parents. You will always be my family. I thank God for that. We've been through thick and thin. And I love you guys to death. And there's no two better people that I would see together than these two. And I love you two very, very deeply. Well, that takes me to my message, which, uh, which is the task in front of me. You know, in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 3 to 6, it's a passage that I very rarely refer to from verse number 3 in weddings because of how much I uh, stress on the word called divorce before marriage and not on the day of marriage. Because they've been through that. They've been through premarital counseling where they've known, where they've talked about that through their, with their premarital counselor. But in chapter number 19 of Matthew, chapter number 3, these Pharisees come to Jesus and ask him, is it lawful for a man to leave his wife and annul their marriage for any other reason? Verse 4, haven't you read? Jesus is astonished. He is surprised. Uh, that, that, that term, haven't you read, is more of a tone of a gasp. He's taken aback and he's like, are you crazy kind of a thing. And he says, he replies and he says that in the beginning the creator made the male and female and said for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. Therefore what God has joined together let no man separate. I love woodworking, and often when I go to, uh, you know, either Lowe's or Home Depot to pick up wood studs to, to work on a project, oftentimes you find uh, certain pieces of wood that are warped, that are not really straight, and no matter how much you look at them straight and you want to make sure that they are straight, there are some pieces that you would inevitably end up with that are not, they're warped. But the amazing thing about warped wood is that if you are to take two pieces of wood, one warped and one not, or two warped, put them together, glue them together, nail them in, screw them in, it's amazing how two pieces of warped wood 
will be glued together, will join together to form one piece. When Jesus talks about uniting, leaving, and cleaving, he has this, this phrase that he's using like glue, so tight, so bonded together. That's the word that Jesus is using over there. We are all warped people, Christian or not. We are warped in desperate need of straightening. The act of becoming one flesh begins when two separate people decide to come together. I want to leave three short points with you guys. Today, as you guys are getting into marriage, I want you to, I want you to remember this. Marriage is a reflection. A, it is a reflection of God. In Genesis chapter number 1, verse 26 and 27, the Bible says this, And God said, Let us, plural, let us make mankind in our, plural, image, in our, plural, likeness, so that they, plural, may rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Verse 27, So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Plural, male and female, he created them. This might probably shock some of you, but this is very biblical when I have to say male or the male is not the image of God. The Bible is very clear when it says male and female is the image of God. You know, more than anything else, God wanted his own portrait, his picture, his painting of himself to be upon earth, a replica of himself. So he put a portrait of a husband and a wife in the form of Adam and Eve. Marriage is the image of God in this earth. Remember what you are going to do today is a reflection of God, who, who God is. Why do I say that? I say that because marriage is probably going to be your biggest mission field. Tomorrow if God calls you to China, I hope you pack up and go. I pray that you will, you will listen to the voice of God. But more than any other mission field that God sends you to, this is your primary mission field. Why do I say that? Because you're going to be surrounded by people all the time, whether Christian or non-Christian. Uh, and, and my question is this, they should, you know, will they see God and will they see Jesus inside the two of you? Will they see the reflection of God inside of your marriage? It's very deep when you actually talk about it because when people see you, Man, they, need, they, they see you as two unique individuals, yet they will see you walk in so much of unity that they will see God inside how you walk, how you talk, how you treat one another, right? Just like the Father, Son, and the Spirit are three separate individuals, and they are completely equal, but still the Father is the head of the Godhead. You know, God calls you the same way. He created you, each one of you, man and woman, Alan Priya, alike, equal. But yet looked at Alan and said, I need order in this home. And, and he looked at Alan and said, I am ordaining you on this day to be the head of this home. Right? Because marriage is a mirror of God, even Jesus says that it's super hard in the verse that we read to separate the two once they are glued together. You know what happens if I, if I glue two pieces of wood together, uh, you know, you know uh, put nails in them, screws in them, and, and I decide that, oh, I don't want those two pieces to be together anymore, say a week after or two weeks after or years after that fact, if I say, you know what, I want these two pieces to be separate, you know what's going to happen? I'm going to pry them out. I'm going to beat, beat them real bad. I'm going to try to pry, 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 pry. But, but guess what? Those two pieces of wood are not going to look the same ever after that. You can take it apart. But that's why Jesus is very, very, very particular about saying, man, what is joined together shall never be separated. The second thing it's a reflection of is marriage is a reflection of Christ and the church. And in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 31 to 33, it says this, For the same reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. I wish he continued to say marriage is a mystery, but that's not what he says because he would, he would be right if he did. Verse 33, however, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect his, her husband. Man, together, you represent the Trinity. That's what's important about this. Individually, Al, you represent Christ. 
Priya, you represent the church. When the world sees your marriage, man, they're going to see a reflection, right, of, of, of how Christ treats the church. When they look at you, they're going to be like, man, that's how Christ is treating the church. How you treat Priya will it be the exact same way, right? People will be looking at me like, a non-Christian would be like, man, that's exactly how Christ treats, treats the church. And that's my question today. How, does, how do you want your marriage to look like? When other Christian friends see your marriage, they're going to see the reflection of Christ and how he treats the church, right? What would you like them to see? Ask yourself that question today. How would you like them to see how you treat your wife, Al? Right? I don't want Jesus to treat his church like dirt. Right? Uh, I don't want his, I don't want Jesus to, you know, to laugh and talk about his church behind its back. I don't want to be talked down to as the church, put down or criticized as the church. In the same way, remember, you owe the person that you're marrying that to honor and respect and love. Or are they going to look at you and say, man, I love to see how he cares and respects and protects and honors and, and, and all of that. His wife, he, I, we, we just love that about him. When, when they see you treating her in that way, let them see Christ for who he is and how Christ treats us. Because that's what your marriage is. It's going to be a reflection. That's what Ephesians says. It's a reflection of Christ and the church. Or Priya, to you too. I'm just not talking to Al, you know. Or your girlfriend's going to look at you and say, girl, I see how you speak to your husband, right? You're kind and loving and uplifting and encouraging and respectful. If that's the way Christ will treat, treat me, man, give me a little bit of that Christ because I would like to know that Christ. Remember that, guys. Will your marriage reflect an abusive Christ or an abounding Christ? And I pray today that your marriage will be the epitome. It will reflect an abounding, or loving, or powerful, or gracious Christ. I'm going to close with this. The third thing it reflects is marriage is a reflection of a covenant. You know, in Malachi 2 and verse 14, it says this. I'm going to give you a backdrop. In Malachi, uh, God is not accepting the offerings of the people of Israel. And the people of Israel are bringing these offerings. And God says, no, I don't want your offerings. And, and the people ask, why? Why do you not want our offerings? And you know what Malachi 2, 14 says? It says, you ask why? It's because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You've been unfaithful to her in your marriage covenant. Remember this. Today what you are going to be doing is a covenant. It's a promise that you are making to one another. Each one of these people that you have invited, people that are watching online, are a witness to the covenant that you're going to make this evening. In a few moments, uh, you guys are going to come up here and we all are going to watch you guys exchanging some vows to one another. Remember this. This is what Jesus is saying. You may try to please God, right, without treating your husband and wife properly. And I want all husbands here, all wives here to understand this because this is a message to all of us. You could, you could, you know, you, you could be try to please in God. You, you could be try bringing off, you could be try, you could be, you could try to bring offerings uh, in the presence of God. Try pleasing God with every way possible. But God looks at you and me and says, those things don't matter if you and I don't know how to treat our own family. But here's the thing that I want to leave with you. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 7 backs us up actually by saying, Men, if you want your prayers answered, live with your wife with an understanding heart. By the way, it doesn't say that you have to understand her because you never will. Trust me. Uh, married men know what I'm talking about. Uh, we, that, don't even go there. Um, understanding heart. Understanding heart. That's what the Bible says. You're entering into a covenant for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in health and in sickness, to, to death to us part. That's the deal that you're about to make. And this is a reflection of the covenant between God and man. And guess what? He didn't go into the covenant saying, well, there's a 50-50 chance this may work or may not work. That's not the way God enters covenants with us. When he entered into a covenant with you and me and said, man, I'm entering it. He said, I'm giving you my 100%. No matter how much you walk away, no matter how much you are unfaithful, it doesn't matter. This God will always be faithful. 
I don't care what stats in America says about marriage. It could be a 50-50, but a godly, Christ-like marriage is a marriage that stands and says, a covenant that I make today, I will fight for it till death do us part. And I pray that that covenant is what will bind you together, hold you together. And I pray that in everything that you do, you will reflect Christ in your marriage, in your individual lives, and you will bring God glory and honor through your lives. I love you both so much. Good luck. Alapriya, so far today you have opened your heart in worship to the Lord as his love has filled your soul as you prepare to enter this incredible miracle of marriage. I want you to look around the room today of hundreds of people who crossed state lines and country lines in the middle of a global pandemic because they loved you so much. They wanted to be right here in person to see you take this amazing step in life. And there are hundreds more, as we've said watching online who have paused everything that they're doing because you matter to them. That's incredible. And today, you stand on the shoulders of incredible parents, a church community. You've sought the Lord, you've prayed, and I know in this season, you prayed, you planned, you canceled all your plans, and you planned again a few times. But you're finally here in this moment to take a deep breath. It's too late to change anything. So we want to be fully present in this sacred space that the Lord has created. You're entering into this marriage as two godly individuals whom we are so proud to know and to be a part of their, your life. And the two people or the four people that really have had a huge part in that development are your parents. You have amazing parents who through their love and sacrifice and selfless love have formed and fashioned you to who you are today. I saw a picture of Lincoln and Salenti at church at Zion last Sunday with both hands lifted to the Lord in worship. I'm imagining Lincoln was thinking, thank you, Lord, for letting Priya finally get married this week. <laughs> You've just wiped out all of their prayer requests. So if you have heavy things on your heart, pass them on to Lincoln and Salenti because they run out of things to pray for <laughs> as of today. Lincoln and Salenti, I asked Priya, what is the one thing that she most cherishes about the family that she grew up in. And her answer was she holds on to the value of generosity with which you raised her and her siblings. You've taught her to be selfless, to put other people first, to care for the needs of those around her. And today, as she begins a new family, she takes the values you've taught her as a foundational stone in building her new life with Al. I asked Al's parents, Josh Brigash and Colin Grace Santi, what's the one thing that your parents have taught you in the home that they created for you. And he told me he was so thankful that you taught them how to put God first in everything. You told him and you raised him to seek God's kingdom, his agenda, his cause above everything else. And today, that's a foundational stone that Al was bringing in to his new family that, you, that he is developing today. So you have a lot to be thankful and proud of. Al and Priya, you are already having a huge head start in life and in marriage because of the godly example of your amazing parents. Priya, you came to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior as a little five-year-old girl at a Maranatha VBS. And although it began as a ticket out of hell because some preacher told you this is what you got to do to not go to hell, that fear over time turned into an incredible love for Jesus. And Christ has changed you inside out and he has transformed you. And all of us have seen the passion you have for Christ. And I know I have seen you so many times go out of your way to show God's love by simply embracing people who may not have fit in. I know for me, even though I'm your cousin-in-law, you treat me as a brother. And that's the way you treat everybody that comes into your life. Al, you came to know Jesus at the age of 10. And ever since then, you've been walking with Christ. We've all seen you lead worship. We've seen you make disciples out of young men. We've seen you truly prioritize the kingdom of God above everything else. And both of you together, as you heard earlier, serve passionately at Livingstone School of Worship, raising up a generation of worship leaders for the kingdom of God. And there in that journey, as you were individually pursuing Jesus, God allowed your paths to merge together and gave you a deep passion to do ministry together, to pursue God together, not as two, but as one, and as Pastor Justin said earlier, it is so clear that God has just begun a power couple 
for the cause of Jesus and for the sake of his name. I got to tell you, in all of the changes that you've gone through in planning for this wedding, Stacey and I have been so impressed by how strong you've been. You have displayed a deep trust and you've embraced the uncertainty of the season. And you've taught us to embrace the uncertainty of our life with deep confidence in God. What I've seen in you is that you showed each other grace. And you walked through this with your family. And what should have weakened you and frustrated you made you stronger. It developed strength in you. And that's going to carry you on for a long, long time. And you showed us what it means to truly believe that God's going to work it all together for your good at the end of the day. Priya, I asked you to describe the gospel in one word if you had to choose a word. And the word of your choice was redemption. And despite your shortcomings and your sin, Christ redeemed you. He saved you. And today, as a father looks on you, he sees you through the lens of Jesus Christ. Al, I asked you for your choice of word. And the word that you chose was sacrificial love and grace. How God wooed your heart and he won you over. How God sacrificed himself on your behalf. And today my charge to you is to let the same words that you use to describe the gospel be used when others describe your marriage. Let the same words that are used as brush strokes of the gospel now paint your marriage, the canvas of your life together. When an outsider looks in, as Pastor Asha said, let them see the power of redemption in your marriage. Let them witness the grace of God, forgiveness, faithfulness, your covenant that God has brought you into. This will be both the power and the purpose, the mission of your marriage. Al and Priya, along with the bridal party, will you join me here at the front of the stage as we prepare to exchange these sacred vows? I want you to grab the hand of your soon-to-be wife. Go ahead and grab both of her hands. We want to make sure we seal this right. <laughs> Al, the one whom you hold by her hand is to be your wife. I want you to take a good look at her. This is the woman God has called you to love and serve until death do you part. Priya has offered you one of the most sacred things under heaven, a woman's life and her love. You may cause her great joy or deep sorrow. I want you to know that before Priya is your spouse, she is first and foremost a child of God. Jesus shed his last ounce of blood to save her, to redeem her, and he's coming back for her. And in the meantime, God has afforded you the opportunity, the privilege to be her husband her spiritual leader. Today, God is laying on you the responsibility of leading her with his word, covering her with his love, and inspiring her with his truth. You're called to love her as Christ loved the church, laying your life down for her good, for her joy. And in doing so, you will protect her. You will provide for her. You will cherish her until your very last day. Al, Priya told me that what she admires the most about you is your calming presence. You always show up when there's a need, when somebody needs anything. You're the first to sign up. You're the first to meet that need and be of service to those in need. She is so confident in you, both for the big things in life and for the smallest things in life. And as you continue to be who you are, empowered by the Holy Spirit, you will keep her heart, her soul close to you forever. So Al, do you take Priya to be your wedded wife, to live together in marriage? Do you promise to love her, to comfort her, to honor and keep her for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful only to her as long as you both shall live? If so, say I do. Priya, the hands that you hold is the one who has just promised to love and cherish you all the days of your life together. The one whose hand you hold is to be your husband. So it's your chance to take a good look. 
Yes, he's tall, dark, and handsome, and somehow in the course of your engagement, he grew a full head of hair. <laughs> it's amazing what a woman can do. But until death do you part, this is a man that your heart is to belong to. God has called you to love and serve him as the church loves and serves Jesus. Upon your love and your devotion, he will lean on for strength and for inspiration. The hands you hold may be smooth, or it'll only be marked by strumming a bass guitar, but soon they'll be nicked and bruised from putting box furniture together, hanging up picture frames, and doing whatever it takes to make your life more comfortable. But I want you to know that these hands will wipe tears from your eyes. They'll hold you, they'll comfort you in illness, and with fear or grief, assault your soul. Priya, before Al is your spouse, he is first and foremost a child of God. God loved him so much, he sent his son on an old rugged tree to die for him, to save him, to redeem him, and Jesus is coming back for him too. And in the meantime, he has called you to be his wife, his suitable help mate. He has called you to sharpen him, to be the instrument of God's holiness in his life. You are called to inspire him to greatness, to stand by him, even if no one else does. He will rise to the level of the affirmation you give him. And on your love and devotion, he will lean on for inspiration. Priya Al told me that what he admires the most about you is how you love everybody and anybody God brings in your life. You can make anyone feel like they're the most important person in the world. And we know that you can light up the room, any room you walk into with your humor and your laughter, but you've lit up Al's life in a way that his heart will never, ever grow dim. And as you stay close to Christ and true to who he's called you to be, you will keep his heart one to yours forever. Priya, do you take Al to be your wedded husband, to live together in marriage? Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him for better or worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness or in health, forsaking all others? Be faithful only to him as long as you both shall live. If so, say, I do. I do. Amen. Congregation, will you bow your heads with me for a word of prayer before we exchange these vows? Father, we hand this moment directly into the nail-pierced hands of Jesus. Only Christ our King, the Holy Spirit, the Father, could make two one because this is a miracle. It's the union of soul, mind, heart, and body. And today, we ask that these words they're about to say will be bonds forever that will unite their soul and heart, and that these mere words will be etched deep into their heart, holding them together, keeping them in the center of God's will, that you would lead them to faithfulness and commitment according to the words they're about to say. So in this moment, ready your hearts. Holy Spirit, do another miracle. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Al, would you repeat these words? <clears throat> I, Al Joseph. I, Al Joseph. Take you, Priya Jacob. Take you, Priya Jacob. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Here on this day. Here on this day. I enter into this holy covenant. I enter into this holy covenant. With God and with you. With God and with you. I promise to love you now and forever. I promise to love you now and forever. As Christ loved the church. As Christ loved the church. Before God and his church. Before God and his church. I commit to have and to hold. I commit to have and to hold. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And thereto I pledge. And thereto I pledge. My faithfulness. My faithfulness. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Priya, repeat these words after me. I, Priya Jacob, I, Priya Jacob take, you, Al Joseph, take you, Al Joseph, to be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. Here, on this day, Here on this day, I enter into this holy covenant with God and with you. I promise to love you now and forever. I promise to be your helpmate. And follow your leadership as we follow Christ together. And follow your leadership as we follow Christ together. Before God and His church. Before God and His church. I commit to have and to hold. I commit to have and to hold. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. From this day forward. From this day forward. 
for better or for worse, for, better or for, worse. for richer or for poorer, for richer or for poor. in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health. till death do us part. And there too I pledge my faithfulness in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation, would you stand with me for a moment of prayer as we seal these words of marriage? Father, we come before you in this very moment in view of the words that they have just exchanged. We thank you that as we began this service in your presence right now in this moment, in view of these sacred vows, you will seal this marriage in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Jesus who worked the miracle at the wedding of Cain, the God who made Adam and Eve one, their parents one, and so many holy men and women today, they stand sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ. They stand pure, covered in the righteousness of Jesus. So Father, as much as they have committed their faithfulness to one another, they are standing on the faithfulness of God Almighty. When we have no faith, you are faithful. And so today we ask the Holy Spirit of God to cover them from this moment on, that they would be a couple who love you, who honors you, who step into their role, their influence, their sphere of life with the Word of God, with the truth of God, with the purity of God. May their words be life to each other. May their grace cover them, God. May their spirit, God, be awakened to the joy, the purpose, the meaning of what you're calling them into. We thank you that this is a holy institution, not accomplished by a man or a woman, but by the God of the universe. So we invite you, God, into their marriage in this moment. Holy Spirit, do the work that only you can do. Every morning when they rise and every evening when they lay their heads in bed, may your Spirit cover and lead them. We ask for the blessing of God, the protection of God, the provision of God. Protect them in their going out and their coming in. Seal them by the blood of the Lamb. May the doorposts of their home, the doorposts of their heart, mind, and soul be covered with the glorious blood of Jesus. So we unite them now in the name of Jesus Christ forevermore. All this in Christ's name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. Amen. At this time, the newlywed couple are going to hear first from the Word of God. And today, Pastor Saji is going to come and read from the Scripture. And in this passage, we are going to read Al and Priya. You are going to hear first the power to your marriage and the pattern, the design God has instituted marriage for. Let's listen to the Word of God. Praise the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 to 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as to their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself and the wife must respect her husband. May the Lord add his blessing upon the reading of the word. Thank you, Pastor Saji, for reading us those scriptures here. Uh, the next thing that we are going to do here is the signing of um, the certificate. And uh, during this time, I'd like to call 
um, the, <clears throat> the parents of uh, uh, both Al and Priya, uh, and uh, Pastor Sanal, and uh, Uncle Finney to come up here, and as we sign the document, right after that, w yeah, the rest of the congregation can sit down at this time. After we sign the document, Pastor Vie Varghese would come and pray uh, for the newly wedded couple. So we have Varghis to come and pray for the newly wedded couple. And during this time, we as pastors, we will surround them and the family members can lay your hands on uh, your children as we pray. As we pray and bless this newly wedded couple, I request the congregation, if you can stretch your right hands towards them and to bless them. Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Sovereign God, our Heavenly Father, we thank thee, O God, for uniting these dear ones, Alex and Priya, as husband and wife, the way thou hast united Adam and Eve back over there in the Garden of Eden. As they have begun their journey, we pray that thou being the Lord of their lives, let thou be the Lord of their family. As the Lord, we pray that, let thou to lead them and guide them throughout their lifetime. Grant them special grace from above to rely on your most precious word, so that their family be centered on the immutable word of God. Thou being the source of all the blessings, we pray, O Master, that let thou to bless them physically, spiritually, and even with a godly generation. We pray that let their family be like the family of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, mm -hmm. Jacob and Rachel, Bols and Ruth, and Acula and Priscilla. As we pray, we pray that considering the spiritual warfare, let thy protecting hand be around them. As we place our human hand and bless this beloved couple. We pray that let thy mighty hand be placed above the human hand. 
we bless them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, Make God. them a blessing Jesus. at home, blessing in the church, and in the kingdom land. I also pray for parents from both families, and the both families as they function together. Let thy name be glorified. Thank the Master for listening to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, families. Let us all pray once again. And after that, Pastor Libin will come ahead and he will do the presentation of the couple. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for what you have done in this space. Father, we honor you. And everybody who is gathered as watching us in person, as also online, Father, thank you that you have brought us all together for this one hour or so as we come together to bless this newly wedded couple, O oh Lord. Thank you for your blessings. And in Jesus' matchless name we pray. And everybody said an amen. amen. May the love of God, the grace of Jesus, and the sweet communion of Holy Spirit be with us until our Lord comes back again. Maranatha, Jesus is coming back. God bless you all. Pastor Levin. Having pledged their faith in and love to each other, according to the ordinance of God and by the authority committed unto me as a minister of the gospel in the state of Texas, I declare that Alexander Joseph and Priya Jacob are now husband and wife. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great privilege to announce to you for the first time ever, Mr. and Mrs. Al Joseph. Is this better? It continues to be my honor to propose a vote of thanks and share some of the announcements. So Priya and Al have written a bit of a thank you at the back of your program and that comes from them with their heartfelt gratitude that you are present. We know that you would have been here out of your love, your friendship for them, but in this time, being here in the global pandemic is extra special 
and they're truly grateful that you are here. They, do, they appreciate that, they value that, and you have heard that again and again from the pastors that they are very grateful. We also have friends and family who are watching online. I know people in London, Ontario, in Toronto, in London, the United Kingdom, in Australia, in India, different parts of the US, Michigan, Maine. We have not been just 150 people here. As one of the pastors also said, hundreds have joined and together our hearts are full of gratitude to God. So grateful for the ministers and the worship team. Amazing job leading us. And that song, we give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. And it is to him that our hearts also bow with thankfulness. Because indeed, for many of us who have known the prayers that have gone behind Priya and Al meeting each other uh, for years, we know that God has orchestrated a marvelous thing and we give him all the glory. Very grateful for what he does and will continue to do in their lives. Now, hosting an event like this is not an easy deal, and we want to, Al and Priya, we wanted to extend their gratitude to the vineyard, to the, the property here, and all the work that has gone in to make this a good, easy, smooth function. A special thank you to Vara, the wedding coordinator. Now, most of us who run events know that to make an event go well, you need good light, sound, photographs, live streaming, and they're only noticed when something goes wrong and everything went well. And to those folk, we say thank you. Now, coming to the last two or three announcements. Announcement number one, the immediate family, Priya and Al have asked if you could stay back for some photographs, maybe in this general area, and there'll be someone to direct you. The dinner will start at seven o'clock, so they are not going on an extended photo shoot. They will be around. A um, couple of things that they are doing, um, exchanging a few, um, some time for themselves. But we will start at seven, and you all know your seating places that has been in your program. We will start at seven. Please be seated by seven. Remember, to, even though we're going to be mingling for the next 45, 50 minutes, let's try to practice social distancing. Thank you so much for wearing your masks. Um, it is out of consideration for others, consideration for what we do not know. We all want to stay healthy. There are many amongst us who have had recent surgeries, health challenges. So thank you for honoring them, for caring for them, for loving them by doing our best to protect their space. And as you mingle in the next 45 minutes or so, there will be refreshments, beverages, as well as appetizers just outside. Thank you once again for being with Al, Priya, both sets of families, family and friends. God bless. You are dismissed.